What you do makes a difference, and you have to decide what kind of difference you want to make. Every individual matters. Every individual has a role to play. Every individual makes a difference. Let us develop respect for all living things. Let us try to replace violence and intolerance with understanding and compassion. And love. Above all we must realize that each of us makes a difference with our life. Each of us impacts the world around us every single day. We have a choice to use the gift of our life to make the world a better place, or not to bother. The least I can do is speak out for those who cannot speak for themselves. Only if we understand, can we care. Only if we care, we will help. Only if we help, we shall be saved. You aren't going to save the world on your own. But you might inspire a generation of kids to save it for all of us. You would be amazed at what inspired children can do. Cumulatively small decisions, choices, actions, make a very big difference. Here we are, the cleverest species ever to have lived. So how is it we can destroy the only planet we have? Young people, when informed and empowered, when they realize that what they do truly makes a difference, can indeed change the world. For those who have experienced the joy of being alone with nature there is really little need for me to say much more. For those who have not, no words of mine can ever describe the powerful, almost mystical knowledge of beauty and eternity that come, suddenly, and all unexpected. If you really want something, and really work hard, and take advantage of opportunities, and never give up, you will find a way. Follow your dreams. Empathy is really important. Only when our clever brain and our human heart work together in harmony can we achieve our full potential. The greatest danger to our future is apathy. Your life matters. You can't live through a day without making an impact on the world. And what's most important is to think about the impact of your actions on the world around you. Having respect for animals makes us better humans. To me, cruelty is the worst of human sins. Once we accept that a living creature has feelings and suffers pain, then by knowingly and deliberately inflicting suffering on that creature, we are guilty, whether it be human or animal. Each one of us matters, has a role to play, and makes a difference. Each one of us must take responsibility for our own lives, and above all, show respect and love for living things around us, especially each other. It's up to us to save the world for tomorrow, it's up to you and me. To reconnect with nature is key if we want to save the planet. Change happens by listening and then starting a dialogue with the people who are doing something you don't believe is right. We are beginning to learn that each animal has a life and a place and a role in this world. If we place compassion and care in the middle of all our dealings with the animal world and honor and respect their lives, our attitudes will change. If we kill off the wild, then we are killing a part of our souls. Chimpanzees, gorillas, orangutan shave been living for hundreds of thousands of years in their forest, living fantastic lives, never overpopulating, never destroying the forest. I would say that they have been in a way more successful than us as far as being in harmony with the environment. I became intensely aware of the beingness of trees. The feel of rough sun-warmed bark of an ancient forest giant, or the cool, smooth skin of a young and eager sapling, gave me a strange, intuitive sense of the sap as it was sucked up by unseen roots and drawn up to the very tips of the branches, high overhead. I had a wonderful teacher about animal behavior, my dog Rusty. He taught me that animals have personalities, minds, and feelings. 
If only we can overcome cruelty, to human and animal, with love and compassion we shall stand at the threshold of a new era in human moral and spiritual evolution, and realize, at last, our most unique quality, humanity. My mother always taught us that if people don't agree with you, the important thing is to listen to them. But if you've listened to them carefully and you still think that you're right, then you must have the courage of your convictions. Farm animals are far more aware and intelligent than we ever imagined and, despite having been bred as domestic slaves, they are individual beings in their own right. As such, they deserve our respect. And our help. Who will plead for them if we are silent? Thousands of people who say they love animals sit down once or twice a day to enjoy the flesh of creatures who have been treated so with little respect and kindness just to make more meat. The most important thing is to actually think about what you do. To become aware and actually think about the effect of what you do on the environment and on society. That's key, and that underlies everything else. Be assured that our individual actions, collectively, make a huge difference. We are unique. Chimpanzees are unique. Dogs are unique. But we humans are just not as different as we used to think. We could change the world tomorrow if all the millions of people around the world acted the way they believe. My mission is to create a world where we can live in harmony with nature. I have found that to love and be loved is the most empowering and exhilarating of all human emotions. We have so far to go to realize our human potential for compassion, altruism, and love. I like some animals more than some people, some people more than some animals. Chimps are far too much human to be my favorite animal. Every individual matters and has a role to play in this life on Earth. Become as knowledgeable as possible. It is these undeniable qualities of human love and compassion and self-sacrifice that give me hope for the future. We are, indeed, often cruel and evil. Nobody can deny this. We gang up on each one another, we torture each other, with words as well as deeds, we fight, we kill. But we are also capable of the most noble, generous, and heroic behavior. The only possible way to get somebody to change is to reach into their hearts. Here we are, arguably the most intelligent being that's ever walked planet Earth, with this extraordinary brain. And yet we're destroying the only home we have. I urge you to read Eternal Treblinka and think deeply about its important message. We have the choice to use the gift of our life to make the world a better place or not to bother. There isn't a sharp line dividing humans from the rest of the animal kingdom. All the time, we find animals doing things that, in our arrogance, we thought were just human. The tree I had in the garden as a child, my beech tree, I used to climb up there and spend hours. I took my homework up there, my books, I went up there if I was sad, and it just felt very good to be up there among the green leaves and the birds in the sky. It's been proven by quite a few studies that plants are good for our psychological development. If you green an area, the rate of crime goes down. Torture victims begin to recover when they spend time outside in a garden with flowers. So, we need them, in some deep psychological sense, which I don't suppose anybody really understands yet. One individual cannot possibly make a difference, alone. It is individual efforts, collectively, that makes a noticeable difference, all the difference in the world. I don't care two hoots about civilization. I want to wander in the wild. It's easy to become hopeless. So, people must have hope, the human brain, the resilience of nature, 
the energy of young people and the sort of inspiration that you see from so many hundreds of people who tackle tasks that are impossible and never give up and succeed. A sense of calm came over me. More and more often I found myself thinking, this is where I belong. This is what I came into this world to do. We seem to have lost the wisdom of the indigenous people, which dictated that in any major decision, the first consideration was how will this decision we're making today affect our people in the future? These days, decisions are made based on the bottom line. It's not that humans and non-humans are identical, but the lack of understanding that led to the slave trade is the same lack of understanding many people have about animals today. When slaves were brought over from Africa, many people believed they were not humans, that they didn't have feelings. Many people believe that primates and other animals don't have feelings, too, but they do. I think I'd like to be remembered as someone who really helped people to have a little humility and realize that we are part of the animal kingdom not separated from it. When I look back over my life it's almost as if there was a plan laid out for me, from the little girl who was so passionate about animals who longed to go to Africa and whose family couldn't afford to put her through college. Everyone laughed at my dreams. I was supposed to be a secretary in Bournemouth. I've got different ideas of complete happiness. But one is being by myself out in a forest, completely happy. Another is walking with a dog in some nice place. And three is sitting around preferably a fire, but not necessarily, and drinking red wine with friends and telling stories. I don't have any idea of who or what God is. But I do believe in some great spiritual power. I feel it particularly when I'm out in nature. It's just something that's bigger and stronger than what I am or what anybody is. I feel it. And it's enough for me. You're thinking about putting scientists into small cages and doing research on them. I wish it could happen sometimes. What makes us human, I think, is an ability to ask questions, a consequence of our sophisticated spoken language. Children can change the world. Which quote did you like the most? Share your opinion in the comments below. Subscribe and don't miss out the chance to see the next video.